On this episode of DIY Tech Bros, we are making a YouTube counter in a picture frame. The counter will toggle between subscribers and views. The build in this video are based on a small and affordable ESP01, but any ESP8266, Lite, ESP12F or Node MCU will work fine for this project. The chip is mounted outside the frame on a pin header. For easy access, if any changes is required in the future. Hi there, I'm Mike. And I'm Chris. Welcome, Welcome to, to our tech, tech channel. channel. First we have the picture frame, the ESP01, the LED display, the step down converter, the 90 degrees pin holder, some wires, two different uh, nippers, and the wrapping tool. I printed out a YouTube logo on a regular sheet of paper. Later in the video you'll see that I don't make any holes for the display. This is because I want a more dim appearance. And now it's time for the pin header. The ESP01 has two rows with four pins in each row. So I need to cut the pin header after the fourth pin. I simply pull out the fifth pin where the cut is gonna be. When cutting the pin header, remember it's quite brittle, so be a little bit gentle with it and let the pliers chew its way through. What I have done here off camera is sanded down the edges of the pin header where I have made a cut and added a bit of heat shrink tubing just to keep the two parts of the pin header together. Making the hole for the pin header where the ESP is gonna be mounted on the back side of the picture frame. Luckily in my case the pin header fits snugly in the hole that I just made so I don't have to use any hot glue or other glue to keep it in place and I'm quite pleased with the placement. As you can see in the video, I'm using a wire wrapping tool instead of DuPont cables. This is simply because it's cheaper, cleaner and gives me a more reliable and secure connection. This is just my choice, so use that method that works best for you. Since the ESP01 and the LED display we are using is a 3.3V operational, we need a small DC step down converter from the 5V power source that we want to use. And then it's time for the schematics. We start off with a 7 segment display and the ESP01. First you connect ground to ground, VCC to VCC, CLK to GPIO2, data pin to GPIO0. And then we connect the step down converter, ground to ground, VCC to VCC. Here I'm just checking the voltage on the inside and outside of my adjustable step down converter. Note this should always be done before hooking up any devices on the outside of the converter, but mine was already adjusted. Using some double sided tape just to hold down the components where I want them to be so they don't slide around when I'm mounting it in the frame. This was my part of the build, now it's over to you Mike. Hi, I'm Mike. I'm gonna walk you through the coding part of the ESP01. You can find a link to all the codes in the description. Also, this tutorial assumes that you're already familiar with programming the ESP8266 with the Arduino IDE. As you can see here, we're using six different libraries. But three of them, the ESP8266 Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi Client Secure, and Wire, comes with either the IDE or the board settings when you download it for the ESP the first time. So you only have to download the YouTube API, the Arduino JSON, and the TM1650. To download the YouTube API and Arduino JSON, you just simply go to Sketch, Include Library, and Manage Libraries. And then you search for the YouTube API, as you can see here, I already have it installed. If you don't have it installed, click Install. 
and you also need the Arduino JSON library. Remember to choose the stable release and not the beta version. The TM1650 we're going to download from GitHub as a zip file. Once you downloaded the file, go to Sketch, Include Library, and Add Zip Library. You're going to find a link to the TM1650 library in the description. To set up the display, we need to include this line, TM1650, this for seg. And we need to define the I square C pins. As we can remember from the sketch, the SDA pin is going to be GPIO 0, and the SCL pin is going to be GPIO 2. Then you need to set up your Wi Fi credentials. The SSID is your network name. The password is whatever you need to log in to your Wi Fi. The API key is something that you get from Google. It's going to be your Google Apps token. Go to consoledevelopers.google.com and hit credentials. Create a new credentials. API key. Copy this key and paste it into your code here. The channel ID is the channel ID of your YouTube channel. It's a part of the URL, so if you just open a browser and go to your channel, the last part of the URL is going to be your channel ID. Then we need to establish the Wi-Fi secure clients and set up the YouTube API alongside with that client. The API MTBS is the milliseconds between updates of data from Google or from YouTube. So 600,000 milliseconds is going to be about 10 minutes. And then we need to set up a variable to hold the last time we actually did the updates. And we need a variable to hold the YouTube subscriber number, the YT subs. And also, if you like to keep track of the YouTube views, we're setting up YT views. And for now, we're setting them both to zero. In the setup, we're using wire to connect to the display with the SDA pin and SCL pin. And we're setting the clock. If you're experiencing a problem with your counter that it only displays zeros, just go back to the setup loop and add the line client dot set insecure. Then we're initializing the display and setting the brightness to 5. And we're going to have the display give you a visual feedback by flashing one of the dots on the display so you can see that's turn on OK. Dot 3, we're turning it true, then false, and true again. Then we're just setting up the Wi-Fi of the chip and delaying it with 100 milliseconds. And then we're starting the connection process to your Wi-Fi. If there's a problem connecting, it's going to retry every half second. And once we're connected to Wi-Fi, we're going to get the channel statistics. And we're going to store the YouTube subs and the YouTube views. In the main loop, we're checking if it's about time to update the stats. And then we're resetting the API last time. And then finally, we're printing the result to the display. And we also make sure that the dot is turned off. Then we leave it there for five seconds. That's why we have the delay 5000. And if you're interested in displaying your views as well, we're after five seconds writing the views to the display. And to show the difference between views, and subscribers, we're going to turn on the dot. So it's a number with a dot. Now it's going to be the views. And then we'll leave it there for five seconds with a delay 5000. If you're not interested in showing the views, then you can just delete this part of the scripts.